Yeah? Yeah, he is. So I've just crossed over the border to Malawi from Tanzania, that's the border in the background. It's pretty hellful leather, I just made it. After eight hours of seat of the pants bus journeys across the increasingly lush southern highlands of Tanzania, I had reached Malawi, Tanzania's underdeveloped neighbour, famous for the beauty of its great lake and its relaxed atmosphere. Sadly, I couldn't enjoy it because when I reached the long way, it was load up the car, pick up the researchers, and drive hell for leather across sweeping plateaus to Lewande National Park. Welcome to Lewande National Park. The shores, the river Shiri. It's seven o'clock in the morning, the sun's already high in the sky. So what I've come here to do is to meet Dr. Emma Stone. So. We're absolutely completely smack bang in the middle of the bush here, so we do get a lot of visitors coming through camp on a daily basis. But at night we get a lot of elephants and also hippos wandering right through. The river is literally about 50 metres to my right, so you are completely amongst it here. Emma was going to show me her field work on bats and hyenas, so at dusk we drove deep into the bush on a carnivore call out, searching for the elusive hyena. I watched as Emma set up the loudspeakers. You're sitting in this pitch black jeep. Everybody's being completely quiet. There's about five of you, six of you there, all sitting, waiting, watching. And meanwhile, just above you, there's the sound of screaming. They're making these, these sounds of dying animals in order to try and lure carnivores in. And it just goes on and on and on. We're trying to work out exactly where the carnivores are. Very, Just behind your ear, there's something going. <laughs> it was strange, uh, but kind of exciting and really cool. When we returned, I asked Emma about doing science in Africa. What's it like having to do science in a country where you can't get anything through customs? For yeah, example? it's not easy. Not easy. It's a challenge. There are frustrations, and most of those frustrations are about logistics and how slow mo it is in Africa. But you know, you put up with those things because you benefit in many other ways. You know, you get to see elephants walking around your tent every day. You get to work with some really, really nice people. Malarians are really warm hearted. They're really welcoming. And you can make a huge, huge difference out in these countries in England. The next evening, we went bat catching. Why are they interesting? Because they don't interest me. Oh my word, bats are fascinating. Um, that's what I find also fascinating about the human responses to bats because most people know so little about them that if they just had one little bit of information they would be hooked and that's generally what happens. Bloody hell, that's huge. There are so many diverse species and there's so much to study in terms of their behaviour because you've got evocation, you've got communication, you've got like evolution, you've got the arms race between um, insectivorous bats and their prey. Despite Lewande's searing beauty, I was getting itchy feet. I had to leave for Rwanda, the gateway to the Congo, in two days, and I desperately wanted to see Lake Malawi before I left. But first, I had one more question for Emma. That your work is deeply involved with in educating people. At how mm. willing are they to get a scientific insight where they might have had none before? It's really varied, actually, and it depends what part of the community you are trying to reach out to. So. Obviously with kids it's different because you've just got sponges and although they're being told all kinds of stuff at home, they still take away the new information that you've given them and that will slowly sort of build. But with um, older community members that's where it's difficult to try and get people to change their um, long-held beliefs that may be sort of rooted in their culture or in their religion. They want to do science and they're really interested in science um, but they have these like what we would consider strange cultural beliefs, like they still believe in witches, for example, and they believe in juju. But at the same time, you know, those beliefs, I don't think they will always be there, and I don't see why they can't be in parallel. That's a cultural thing. But people are still really keen to learn science. A lot of people do understand that, like, the facts, if that's what we to call them, will come from rigorous science. And with that, I bid goodbye to the bewitching Luwande and spent my last night by the stunning Lake Malawi. All the swimming came at a cost. Uh, I'm going to go and get Bill Hartz here. And I actually feel fine, <laughs> although I presumably infected with lots of tiny worms. Now, I was headed for the jungle. <laughs> 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 